All righty. All right. Hi, I'm Dr. Kevin Duplishan, and uh, I am the vice president for the American Academy of Cosmetic Surgery and uh, part of the annual scientific meeting committee that's planning the meeting that will be held in Las Vegas, February 3rd through the 5th um, at Mandalay Bay. So last year, we were not able to have a meeting in person. Um, it was virtual, but I did have a great opportunity to go up to Chattanooga and visit with Dr. Deal and Dr. Kluska, who was, who was so gracious, along with uh, Apex Medical that hosted us for the day. And we did some live broadcast on high def lipo that Dr. Deal did, and Dr. Kluska did a beautiful mommy makeover. And so we've invited them back to talk a little bit about their experience. And these two wonderful surgeons are going to be heading up the high def liposuction course or sessions for this year's meeting. And I know you guys are, are crazy busy and do this every single day. But Chad, why don't I start with you and you tell me a little bit about what's going on in your life and, and uh, what the session looks like to you. Yeah, obviously it's an honor always um, uh, to be asked to do something like this work with the academy. That's our that's our home. Um, so uh, more than anything, I cannot wait to get back. Um, that's 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 the meeting where it's family, friends, uh, education, but um, but definitely home. Um, you know, the high definition part of things is the, the term itself has kind of evolved, um, and nowadays people expect not just body sculpting; they really expect those wow results and what a lot of that uh, surround itself is these um, incredible definition that you're starting to pop up a lot on social media people are getting to see some incredible work uh, breast dogs aren't just breast dogs anymore it's defining sculpting around the breast and adding the implant uh, doing abdominal plasty isn't just a good tummy tuck technique with safety anymore it's how do you do that and actually even define out one's abs or give them certain uh, types of looks. One of our speakers is going to talk about something about the kind of the Pilates look. It's much more than just pull the excess skin, remove the fat, really taking it to the bleeding edge of what you can do and do safely and what post-operative care looks like, because it is different. And it is completely different to take care of someone that you really define out. So whether it's breast, breast lifting, tummy tucking, or just body sculpting in general, um, you could do an entire conference just on high definition techniques, um, not just to remove fat. So um, doing this and having a busy practice to be able to take advantage of learning from mistakes. We all have complications. We all make mistakes. But being very high volume five days a week, both myself and Dr. Kluska, we've been able to really continue to hone in. We're also always students ourselves. We learn so much from all the doctors that visit us. We get so many doctors, whether it's just the ones that come for the courses of all backgrounds, whether they're boarded in plastics and cosmetics, ENT, facial plastics, um, family practice physicians, um, OBGYNs, walks of all type come in to learn their techniques, whether beginners or advanced. But then even a lot of the technology companies who need their technology training to be done well and safety um, uh, parameters. They use our office to train in those techniques as well. So we have so many surgeons that come in and we train. So to take all this knowledge, wrap it up into one section, we feel like we've put together a good team of speakers that will encompass, hopefully within our block, all of the latest trends and how to stay safe and maximize the results. That sounds a little bit generic, but I really mean it. And people are gonna hear things they've never heard before. I promise you that things they've never heard before in the world of high definition. So um, we're excited. I mean, we do this all day, every day. No, you guys do a great job. We had such a good time last year. I mean, I couldn't wait to kind of get up there. And, and it was just such a great show and, and good for everybody. And you're right. You could spend two or three days or a week or a year learning all this stuff. But I know that everything y'all will be talking about will be so beneficial to everyone. So, Mike, what's uh, what you thinking about these days? What's going on with you? Well, you know, <clears throat> from a high definition standpoint, it's not just sculpting abs. It's not just sculpting out arms or thighs or low back or anything. But like Dr. Deal said, high definition now is all encompassing, full body. There are patients now that want high definition face, high definition chest or, or gynec for gynecomastia and those types of things. So, you know, when we do speak on this, we will be covering every little facet of high definition with and without 
the different modalities that we use, such as Vaser, Renuvion, body type, those types of things. Additionally, what uh, and what I'm going to focus on too is when you do this, you do get some skin laxity. And the question is, how can you address that skin laxity in every location, whether it's neck, arms, thighs, uh, abdomen, breast even. And so my part of my talk um, in this um, little lecture series that we're going to do, we'll be focusing on the ability or ways to get rid of skin laxity surgically and non-surgically. Yeah. Well, you know, there's no doubt. I mean, I know we all use the plasma device and, and, and the truth is I told you guys how it really changed my ability. And I bought it primarily for arms and inner thighs because that's what I thought. But now, I mean, it's everywhere. It's backs, it's flanks, it's necks, it's mid faith stuff. It's just incredible. So I know you guys will be talking some about that and some of, there'll be a lot of that at the meeting as well. I talked to our friend Mark Lowney today. I had a, something I wanted to talk to Mark, and Mark's talking about this super snatched waist, I think, mm -hmm. in the high def session. And he was telling me a little bit about some of the post op stuff. He's, he's basically started a whole business, I think, just around managing the post op in terms of massage and all of the things that go into that. And I, I know you guys do a lot in terms of gourmets, gourmet selection, lymphatic massage. Are y'all going to talk anything about that at the meeting? Yeah, absolutely. So in fact, that's one of the things in particular Mark's going to go over. It, it sounds like it's almost too good to be true, but the difference between two surgeons treating the same patient who have the start exactly the same, but one of them took the time to go through good, good lymphatic postoperative massages, good ones, not just generic, put them in nice, smooth, but very firm garments in the right places. Um, even on top of those garments, sometimes wearing compression or, or waist trainers, but not, but you got to be careful, not too much to cause pressure necrosis, judicious use of drain, <coughs> liposuction. We never really thought about liposuction and drains. You would think of that more in the realm of maybe aggressive, aggressive, or definitely with flat based, but almost always using drains. The differences are night and day. I mean, night and day, how, how small you will get somebody's waist because we don't realize we're leaving a lot of blood behind and that turns into tissue which can make you not just lumpy bumpy, but actually more volumized. Uh, getting all of that blood out, not just the seroma fluid, not the serous, but even the blood out, people will end up with tremendous results. Combine that with a tummy tuck so you protect your diastasis closure. You didn't realize how much more of a, a tight waist you can get by protecting that diastasis for the first couple of months. These things aren't just helpful adjuncts. They're game changers in your final results. And a lot of people are going, man, how does that doctor's results always look so much better? A lot of times it's the post-operative care and a lot of doctors haven't invested into that, having someone in their office or at least someone that they can work with. I like the term that Mark uses, snooper snatch waste, because although it seems very silly to us as physicians, that's what the patients understand. So he uses terminology and he's going to use those terms with us when he's teaching us to how he communicates with patients. In other words, giving them the smallest waste possible. To me, that term was almost derogatory when I first heard it a year ago. Yeah. Now that's actually the term that people use to understand you're really going to mm -hmm. give them aggressive waste. His contrast on the, the size of the waist and the fullness in the buttock is extraordinary in one stage. I've never seen such extraordinary changes. So his, his lecture is going to be great. And that's, that's one of the things we're talking about. So post-operative care, and how to do it in a way that's that's very, very safe. And even how to do things like um, a full abdominoplasty. But how do you combine that with high def in a way that is safe and you preserve the blood supply? And then Dr. Klusk is going to be very robust with it all the way from full abdominoplasty to when to do a mini versus what we kind of call the extended mini versus when can you bring out these technologies like plasma or radio frequency. So when do you, in fact, some very cool things that he does where he combos both certain areas where you could use the technology to tighten and on the same patient where you remove it <coughs> because the flap is never going to shrink that much. Learning the keys, no matter where you are in your training, um, learning from our mistakes too. We all make mistakes, right? And, and figuring out, okay, that's not going to do it. The technology does work here and there. That's what we're going to try to hit everyone with. Um, so, so it should be pretty jam packed. We're letting our speakers go a little bit longer. We decided to go with six 15 minute lectures to let them really get in more detail about what they're doing rather than keeping the lectures at 10 minutes. I think everyone's going to be in for a good hour and a half of learning. No, I agree. I'll, I'll certainly be there. One of the things that I was like, like I saw one of the Dr. Uh, Mata, Carlos Mata, the Pilates look. 
Mm-hmm. Mike, what, what's the Pilates look? Was- yeah, you know, I, I want to learn. <laughs> uh, I mean, truly, you know, yeah. you, you can get high definition. The Pilates yeah. look is going to be more of a lean, let's say, uh, lightly etched look. And then you're going to get just thin or feminine look. Um, but I, I'm interested in learning more details on that. And again, like Dr. Deal said, we're learning stuff every single day from one another in our practice. And then something like this where somebody else has come up with an idea, that's, that's, we're going to be able to incorporate that and take this to the next level. Yeah. Uh, personally, I will tell you, when you see that Pilates look, it's beautiful. It really is. We always worry about the women um, looking too at Right. Yeah. And then, but we do hear some of the women say, Hey, I want a little definition, but it seems like when you try to give them a little, it looks sometimes a little too aggressive, a little too masculine. He has got a great technique where he gives them what he calls the Pilates look. It's beautiful compromise. And so to hear him talk about, you know, where he does and artistically what he does and how he gives them that look. And he has video where it's not just stills and not just laying on the table. You know, a lot of people cheat. Right. And, and before and after photos and they, you know, it's, it's, it's rampant. He has these patients standing up, turning around 360 degrees and walking and they look stunning, very natural with just a little bit of etching done. Right. So I'm, I'm really looking forward to his talk as well. Yeah, no, all the talks look incredibly well. Um, just, just fantastic. How, how much um, do you think the technology, I know the, the, the two or three major technologies that you guys use have affected what you do and, and will that be represented in these talks? Uh, and uh, I will definitely be representing uh, the technologies. I know Dr. Dale will as well. Uh, th- I don't think you can do what we do without the technologies mm-hmm. and to get out there. And fortunately for us, we've reached critical mass. So we have all of the technologies and for other docs out there to, you know, we, we talk about this a lot, Dr. Dale and I on our social media stuff too. The other docs say they have the technologies, but really don't. And they're just saying they do to, to get the patient in the door. Mm-hmm. Um, they're never going to get those results. You cannot get results with just a number four Mercedes cannula and expect to etch out an abdomen or get a Pilates look. Uh, what do you think, Dr. Dale? Yeah, I, that's the point. There's there's equipment. We all would say that, I think. Right. <laughs> uh, no, I, I guess I'm just maybe just entering midway in my career doing this now, I guess, what, 11 going on my 12th year. But we've all seen technology go from gimmicky to, OK, this might be helpful to oh, it's definitely helpful to now it's irreplaceable. Right. So that there's definitely tech in the operating room that I would just have to say it's irreplaceable. I can't get the results that the patients want now without it. Now there's other stuff that's helpful. I like my headlights they are helpful. I could still use an overhead. I like, um, I could still transfer fat without a fancy fat transfer system. Okay. But how are you going to tighten skin without some of this technology without cutting it out? How are you going to, how are you going to be able to melt superficial skin fat and truly be able to sculpt people unless you're using some sort of ultrasound to really melt it? Or if there's a new one that comes along, we're always evaluating right. technologies. So, you know, we always want to be careful CME lectures about sticking to the science and not trying to promote a company. We're, we're not promoting a company. We'll stick strictly to as much as possible about the modalities, ultrasound, RF, plasma. But it's true. We can't get the results without it, period. Um, and unfortunately, some people, because the tech can be, I understand, a little pricey. They'll say they're using it when they're really not. Um which is a shame. And you got to be truth. You got to be truthful in your advertising. You got to be truthful in your before and afters, no Photoshopping. You can get these results. I will tell you all the people on the panel, I, I know them, you know, reasonably well, and they're good doctors who do really good work. I've seen their patients in person and they do look exceptionally good in real life. And that's what we want. We want people to see doctors that are, are doing consistently good work and learning from them. Um, I, I'd say, you know, buckle up. It's going to be a good, good hour and a half. Um, you know, the, another little part of it I'm going to spend a little bit of time with, but I'm going to keep it as much education as possible. Is talk a little bit about high definition in the media because it has become um, that term high def is almost be, is be starting to become a very social term that people are um, ascribing to uh, a doctor with more um, who's more aggressive, maybe or has mastered new or the newest techniques. If you just right. say now that you're a liposuction artist or you do liposuction, 
the public doesn't get the right opinion of you, even if you've been doing it 10, 15, 20 years. They really want to hear that you know how to do high definition LIFO, even if you're not sculpting out apps. So we're going to talk a little bit about that and the nomenclature imbued and how you're going to be able to communicate with your patients. Well, I know you guys will, will, will do a great job. And I know that one of the things that, that the Academy has always promoted is safe cosmetic surgery, safe environment, operating accredited facility, all the, the proper things that need to be done. And I'm sure you guys will talk a little bit about that, but that's a big and a very important thing for the public and for doctors to recognize as well that, that, that these are incredibly safe procedures. They're surgical procedures, but if done well and done in the right setting, that you can really push the envelope in terms of getting these fabulous results, which is what people are coming in for. Like you said, two years ago, when somebody came in and said, I want to be snatched, I, uh, I'm not really sure I knew exactly what they meant, but <laughs> right. you know, it's, it's, it's become something that, that clearly makes sense now. And it's a hot word. It's a hot topic. And um, it's really what drives people in, into the operating room. We have, um, we, I want to say hello to Dr. Uh, Muhammad uh, from Syria. We actually have people tuned in all the way from Syria. So uh, I love it. So we are, we are broadcasting all around the world with this stuff. So um, Mike, what else, what else, anything you'd like to add? Um, we, yeah, you know, let's, 15 let's just, minutes or so. Yeah. Let's talk about safety because, you know, if from state to state rules and regulations are, are different from accrediting bodies, rules and regulations are different, whether it's triple AHC, it's quad AHC, it's mm -hmm. inpatients or, uh, you know, uh, hospital based, uh, surgery center versus outpatient based surgery center, whatever. The point of it is this, we are not going to present anything that we don't do ourselves. And that isn't safe. Uh, Dr. Deal and I, we, we've worked long and hard on these techniques and we realize now that, Hey, maybe we have to stage that patient. Uh, because her BMI is 34 or whatever the case. And we're not going to show you, we're not going to say, hey, we did this all in one stage and took a 35 BMI to a 22 BMI. That's just not reality. That's not what we do. But we will touch on the safety of uh, performing volume liposuction along with high definition contouring. I mean, that, that's hard to do in one stage. All right. And I don't want to steal anyone's thunder in the talks, but to give you an idea of some of the cool things that are going to be said, let's say you have a BMI. We will operate up to BMI of 35 and as long as there's no other comorbidities, right? A lot of people have a BMI cutoff of 30 and that's great. <coughs> we have a beautiful, you know, accredited, you know, we're doing uh, usually general anesthesia. Most of patients, of course, there's, it's easy to do a lot of liposuction, body sculpting, even under local. Um, and we, we teach both methods and how to do those sorts of things. However, let's say you have a larger BMI. You have two, two choices um, and no one really talks about this. You can take a larger patient in one stage and understand the true inflection points of where to really bring them in. And even though they're larger, if you bring them in in the right spot, they look good. And it's not the flanks. If you think you're going to bring a flank in, you'll actually make them look worse. Full back look. It's actually higher up. Dr. Lowney is going to talk a lot about, he calls, it's, this is kind of silly. He calls it the point of maximal snatchness. <laughs> and to, to, to relay the point, there is a key point where if you will bring them in the most at that point and work your way out into what you feel like is a safe amount of total supernatant, you could even take a larger patient and give her beautiful curves. Yeah. Of course, the other option is, is this two stage of the patient debulk them up to four liters, depending on your state. A lot of states will allow four liters of Supra. Then you can come back, take another liter or two, again, depending on your state, and you can do maybe the abdominoplasty. Or maybe you do four liters in the back, abdominoplasty in the front, and then come back and get the rest of the fat from the front and do a little scar revision because you're going to have a little excess. So how do you handle these larger BMIs? What if you don't do tucks? What if your practice just does lipo? Then we could teach you how to give them great results and or when to pass that patient to someone who can at least do the flat based surgery. We want this to be something that everyone's going to really learn from. What do you do with higher BMIs? What safeties are definite no no's? Be careful with the anemic patient. Be careful. There's so many mm. anemic patients. Get their blood levels up. There's even new devices out there that you can actually check the hematocrit on a patient without sticking their finger anymore. You can actually put a device on their finger and you let it sit there for just a few minutes. It'll tell you their hematocrit. Really cool tech that's out there and monitoring. A lot of people are using cell savers, giving the patient back their blood, which would have sound 
traumatic. We only use those in trauma. We use those in aggressive cardiac surgery or, or, or liver. <coughs> actually that's being used quite a bit now in aesthetics because one of the biggest comorbidities of these longer surgeries with lipo is of course acute post-op anemia and managing that is one of the biggest things anemia seroma care and post-operative constipation boy those three things alone yep. post-op seromas getting the fluid down healing and making sure they're not anemic getting the blood levels back up managing that um um, and constipation. Those three things, if you master those three, your results go through the roof and the patients have great recoveries. Yeah. And you know what else too, Dr. Deal, don't forget our little, we have our new um, pain control uh, that we'll be talking about a little bit too, that gives patients up three to five days post-operative pain-free um, uh, relief from uh, big surgeries. We primarily using it when we're doing excisional surgery or muscle tightening, that type of thing. Um, but the, that product, the product we'll talk about, uh, really helps with that as well. And when pain is under control, patients are up moving more. They don't get constipated as quick, uh, or as much and they recover quicker. Yeah. I bet you, I bet you 98% of doctors don't even know about this, this new medicine. They're going to think that we're talking about, of course, Exparel, right? Well, Exparel is a great drug, but the problem with Exparel, it's great. But the problem is if you don't inject it right where the nerve is, then it doesn't matter that it may last two to two to three, two and a half days. You're going to miss the nerve. There's now a new gel that you can put in. That's going to last two and a half days or longer. That doesn't require you to be right on the nerve. You can just put it slather right on the abdominal wall after a diastasis closure on the wound in a breast pocket. It is being used off label currently, um, but it is extraordinary. So you can just put breast implants in, put this gel in. It takes you a second. You just put it in and it coats the implant and the patient is numb for two and a half days. Well, I want to stop you guys right there because I don't want you to give away all your secrets. <laughs> <Y'all>, <laughs> I love it. Y'all have said enough. I think we're going to need a bigger room for the meeting. It sounds to me like we're going to need a bigger room for the meeting because everything you guys are talking about, I know everybody there will want to hear about. So I cannot thank you guys enough for taking a few minutes tonight. I know we've all worked hard today and, um, you covered more than everything that we wanted to. I want to remind everybody that early bird registration for the AACS meeting in Las Vegas ends uh, December 14th. So you don't want to miss out. We will also be having a facelift and eyelid cadaver course on the Wednesday before the meeting. These are always fabulous. And we do have just a few spots left. So if you want to register, please do that. Follow us at hashtag AACS 2022. And we will see you guys in Las Vegas live and in person. Can't wait. Thank you yeah, all so go, much, guys. A-A-C-S. Good night. Thank you. Yeah, thank you all. Good night. Mm.